If you want to lose weight fast without being on a very restrictive, boring diet plan, then you're really going to like this video because while most diet plans will require you to constantly keep your calories really low or to avoid carbs almost entirely, there are a couple dieting strategies that get you to lose weight in a short amount of time without having to constantly starve yourself. These are known as cyclical diet plans and they have a lot of unique advantages over regular dieting. Today, I wanna to go over what I believe to be the five most powerful cyclical diet plans that can really help those of you that are looking to kickstart your fat loss and even those of you that have already been dieting but still can't get rid of that last bit of stubborn fat. If you stick with me through this video, I can guarantee that not only are you gonna learn something new, but you'll be able to take this information and apply it right away so you can start seeing some very fast results. Let's start with the very first one, which is the most basic form of cyclical dieting known as calorie cycling. When you start a diet, you'll normally begin by figuring out how many calories you should be eating to create a deficit and lose weight. In case you guys don't know, a really easy way to do this is to multiply your body weight in pounds by 12. That should give you a pretty good starting point. To keep this simple, let's pretend that the number of calories that I need to eat to lose weight is 2,000 calories. And let's pretend my maintenance number to maintain my weight is 2,500 calories. With a regular calorie restriction type diet plan, I'm cutting about 500 calories per day. So after seven days, I'll wind up with a 3,500 calorie deficit. This is how most people approach dieting. However, there's another way. I can cycle my calories. So I might start with 1,700 calories on day one. Then the next day I would have 2,000 calories, then 2,300 and maybe 1,500 calories for the next two days, then 2,000 calories. And finally, at the end of the week, I could have a nice cheat day in which let's say I would eat 3,000 calories. If you add all of these numbers up and divide the total by seven, you could see that by the end of the week, I would still be taking in an average of 2,000 calories per day. The reason why you might wanna do this instead of consistently sticking to 2,000 calories every day for the whole week is because cycling calories this way provides many benefits that may make it a better dieting strategy for you. For example, some studies show that a calorie cycling diet might not slow your metabolism the way that a more traditional calorie restriction diet would, especially when done for longer periods of time. This may help you keep the weight off better after you bring your calories back up to maintenance levels. Another big benefit is even though you will have to eat a lot less calories some days, on other days, you'll be able to eat much more calories, allowing you to have a break or a cheat day. This really helps a lot of people stick to the plan because they have something to look forward to every week. And this may be why many studies show that cyclical diets have better adherence rates. Sometimes the group cycling calories have less than half the amount of dropouts as the continuous calorie restriction groups. Now, cycling your calories is the broadest form of cyclical dieting, so it gives you a lot of options. You can go high calorie one day and then low calorie the next day, or instead, you can have really high calories one week and really low calories the next. As long as your totals balance out over time, it can work as well as a more continuous calorie restriction diet. Let's move on to the second type of cyclical diet that'll help you lose weight very fast, the cyclical ketogenic diet. A regular ketogenic diet requires you to keep your carbs really low and most plans will call for you to only have about 5% of your daily calories coming from carbs. That usually amounts to less than 30 to 50 grams of carbs per day. Not only is having such a small amount of carbs every day difficult for a lot of people to stick to, but there are also drawbacks if you're keeping your carbs really low for long lengths of time. One of these drawbacks are thyroid issues. In fact, some studies show that the carbohydrate content of your diet may be one of the most important things for your thyroid hormone metabolism. If your thyroid isn't working optimally, your weight loss will most likely stall. Another drawback is in the area of performance. There's no denying that the ketogenic diet is very effective for weight loss, but there's also no denying that carbohydrates are very important for improved performance levels, especially at higher intensities. Studies show that people that have a moderate amount of carbs when dieting will be able to perform better at those higher intensities. Lifting heavy weight while you're trying to lose weight isn't only for your ego, it also helps you preserve more muscle mass. If you lose more muscle while cutting, you'll also slow down your metabolism, making it harder to maintain that weight loss when you're done. Another drawback is that with the regular keto diet, you may not get enough fiber, which can lead to constipation as well as other digestive issues. The cyclical ketogenic diet will help you avoid most of these issues and will decrease the early symptoms of what's known as the keto flu. 
You would do it by following the regular keto protocol for five to six days of the week, and then you would carb up one to two days per week. This will temporarily knock you out of ketosis, but you'll get right back into ketosis fast since you'll be following the keto protocol around 90% of the time. You can also try a targeted ketogenic diet where you have 25 to 50 grams of carbs before your high intensity workouts. Either of these approaches will make sticking to the keto diet easier and could ultimately help you preserve more muscle mass. Just keep in mind that if you've been on a very strict keto diet for a while, you'll probably gain some water weight when reintroducing carbs. Studies show that each gram of carbs is stored in your muscles with three grams of water. So be aware of that, but remember, the point of all this is fat loss and it's not to lose water weight. Another thing that I want to mention is that if you're not having frequent intense training sessions throughout the week, you won't be depleting enough carbs and glycogen to quickly get back into ketosis. In this scenario, a cyclical keto diet may not be the right choice and sticking to a regular keto protocol may work better. Now, a lot of people think that this is the same thing as carb cycling, but it's not. And carb cycling is actually the next method that you can use to see some very fast results. Not only is carb cycling great for burning fat, but it's also great for preserving strength and muscle mass. Another benefit is that it'll help you keep your performance levels high and reloading on carbs will assist with recovery since you'll be replenishing your muscles glycogen stores. Typically a carb cycling diet will involve a couple high carb days, moderate carb days, and low carb days. An example would be 30 grams of carbs on your low carb day, 100 grams on your moderate day, and 250 on your high carb day. Your protein intake would remain consistent throughout the week, and on your lower carb days, you could choose to increase your fat intake to decrease your hunger and help you along with the diet. You would want to position your high carb days around your intense workouts. Some people will benefit more by carbing up the day before an intense workout. Others do better when they carb up on the same day as their intense workout. If you work out first thing in the morning, I recommend that you try first positioning your high carb day the day before that workout. On the other hand, if you normally work out at night, then a high carb day on the same day as your workout may work better. Many people find it much easier to stick to a carb cycling diet because they don't feel sluggish and tired and constantly being allowed to reload on carbs curbs your hunger and makes the plan much less restrictive than most. One study found that loading up on carbs rather than fat increase the participants resting metabolic rate and also increase leptin, which is a hormone that's released by your fat cells to tell your brain that you're full and no longer need to continue eating. Since cutting calories in any way will typically slow your metabolism and cause your weight loss results to plateau, we want to do everything we can to keep that metabolism as high as possible while losing weight and carb cycling could help us accomplish just that. The best part is that even though you can eat a good amount of carbs on this type of diet plan, you could still get many of the benefits that you would get from a low carb diet, such as improved insulin sensitivity and faster fat loss. Let's move on to the fourth easy way to kickstart your weight loss, which is alternate day fasting. The most basic form of alternate day fasting would be done by fasting for 24 hours and then eating freely for the next 24 hours. Since you wouldn't be taking in any calories on your fasting day, you have a lot more flexibility when you get to eat on the following day. Even though you can eat more calories than usual and be less restrictive with your meal options, it's very important to remember that you can still overeat and slow fat loss even if you fasted for the full 24 hours the day before. Remember, all of these diet plans still require that your calories balance out at the end of the week. A large meta-analysis that compared alternate day fasting to a regular continuous low calorie diet showed that for many people, alternate day fasting may be easier to stick to, result in greater fat loss and less muscle loss. Another study found that protein breakdown rates drop as you fast for longer periods of time. And this may be why there's less muscle loss from alternate day fasting. Now I do have to mention that this diet won't work for everyone. For some people, not being allowed to eat anything at all for 24 hours can prove to be very difficult. And even though studies show that alternate day fasting doesn't have any negative effects on eating disorder symptoms, for some people that might feel like they're starving all day, it could potentially lead to binge eating. Luckily, there is a way that you can ease your way into this diet plan by having a small 500 calorie meal on your fasting day. Research supports this idea that having a small meal can make this diet much more sustainable for longer lengths of time. 
If you still think that this might be a little too challenging for you, you'll probably do much better with our final method to kickstart your fat loss. You've most likely heard about it a lot lately. I'm talking about intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is still a form of cyclical dieting because you'll cycle between periods of eating and periods of fasting. The most common approach is the 16-8 method. With this protocol, you would fast for 16 hours and then you would limit your feeding window to only eight hours. Since you'll most likely have to skip at least one meal, intermittent fasting allows you to have some more flexibility with your meal options, just like alternate day fasting does. However, it is a lot easier for many people to manage because you don't have to fast for a full 24 hours and you still get to eat large filling meals every day. Large systematic reviews have shown that intermittent fasting is at least as effective as other continuous calorie restriction diet plans for both fat loss and muscle preservation. But because of intermittent fasting's flexible nature, a lot of people prefer it over continuous energy restriction. Again, with the 16-8 protocol, it's important that you still eat mostly healthy foods during your eating window. The plan will backfire if you eat tons of junk food or simply overeat and end up taking in too many calories. That's it for today, guys. As always, I really hope this video has helped you out. And if it has, make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit that bell icon so you can be notified whenever I release new tips and tricks just like you found in this video. Also, if you're looking for a done-for-you approach that'll get you to lose 20 pounds or 5% of your body fat in only six weeks, as it already has for so many of my clients that have already completed the program, then try my six-week challenge. In this program, I go into much more detail on each of the five cyclical dieting plans that I talked about today, and it even includes a customized meal plan, a 42-day workout plan, and an accountability coach to help guide you through the entire process. The best part is that the challenge is free, but there is a catch, and the catch is that you actually have to stick to the plan. If you're serious about making a transformation in the next 42 days and you want more than just another diet and workout plan that'll just sit there gathering dust because you never even looked at it or tried it, then click the link below in the description to find out more about how our challenge works. Or you could just visit the website directly at gravitytransformation.com. I'll see you guys soon.